Howdy, howdy, folks. It's Donnie Cancel Fade right here again. It's time for race 32 out of 36 of NASCAR Thunder 2003 Season Mode Let's Play. It's the Georgia 500 Under the Lights at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Again, this is another uh, portion of the custom schedule I implemented. I turned the Fall Atlanta race into a Fall Atlanta Night race. So, that's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. Uh, let's go look at the standings after a miserable day in Martinsville, getting absolutely wrecked by um, Mike Skinner. <sighs> oh my goodness. We have a new points leader, and his name is Dale Jarrett. He takes the points lead over Thurlin Marlin, and Jeff Gordon's going to lose a few points. We had a great opportunity to get uh, gain a crap load of points on Jeff Gordon, and we couldn't get it done because Mike Skinner decided to just, I don't know, uh, completely destroy us, and this guy is what running like 35th. Well, this guy is running 38th in points, and he freaking took us out. So I mean, that's absolutely um, that's super unfortunate. So I got Atlanta Motor Speedway this weekend. Next weekend we got uh, the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400 from North Carolina Speedway. We have the Texas Road Course, and of course the Samsung Radio Shack 500 from Texas Motor Speedway. So we got some interesting races coming up. Again, I'm eyeing one more victory before the end of the season. And uh, for the Georgia 500, you see. Hmm. We're just showing the normal Sitco colors. Let's go track set. Alright, so we're on the pole for the Georgia 500 underneath the lights here in Georgia. Um, the car does. Barely squeaked by in uh, by Johnson in terms of uh, qualifying speed. We, we just barely got around them, but um, I really don't know how this race is going to go. You know, I, we just squeaked by for the pole, but I think we're going to be really good in the short run, but long run we're going to give up a lot. And it's going to be a long race, so I mean, it's a give and take. You know, it's part of it, but let's just go. Let's just go for it, man. Let's go for it. So. Let's sit down for pre-race ceremonies. We're back at the Atlanta Motor Speedway for more exciting NASCAR Winston Cup racing. I think we're in for some incredible racing. Judging by this track's history, the high speeds that can be reached here does make for some exciting racing. There's no restrictor plates to keep you from being able to pass either. It's just all out, flat, good old stock car racing with the best drivers in the bid. I can't wait to get this one underway. Jeff Burton, who's currently in the top ten in points, will try to reach that next step, the top five. Yeah, he needs to focus on this race. Poor finish can quickly bounce you out of the top ten. But a win can gain you several positions, might even put you in the top five. We'll see what happens. Dale Jarrett was part of one of the tightest point battles in NASCAR history in 1997. He ended up finishing second for Jeff Gordon. And he didn't finish second by much, only 14 points. Mark Martin wasn't too far behind either. Those last couple of races in the season are pretty exciting when a championship is on the line. Jeff Burvis is towards the bottom of the points list this season. And of course, nobody wants to be on the bottom of that points list. You'll have to work extra hard to pick up spots. Not an easy task to dig yourself out of a hole in this series. Engines are fired here in Atlanta Motor Speedway. It's Jimmy Johnson, the Lowe's Monte Carlo, and Jeff Burton and the Sitco Ford Taurus on the front row tonight. So, we have another lose again. We should go out here and look at that. Mike Skinner's out here. So, guess who's getting ran uh, pretty rough? It's going to be Skinner because I am not going to allow him to uh, have another good finish after what he did to me last week in Martinsville. So, if I get the opportunity, I'm going to crash him. Anywho, um, let's just try to have a good race. That's all we can hope for is we can just have a good race, but who knows? Who knows? This, this season has been feast or famine for the Sitco team. When we're good, we're really good, but we're not good. We're not good at all. There's a lot of unknowns from the setup. I don't know how we're going to be on the old tires, because the tire work is going to climb up. and Look who it is. It's freaking Skinner down there. I'm not going to throw away my race right now to 
um, Rex Skinner, but if I have the opportunity, I will. I will dump him and easily cause a caution. I will not hesitate one bit. But right now we got Hendrick Motorsports uh, battling for the win here so far early on. More or less the lead, not really the win. God, I love those 2002 Monte Carlo so much. The beautiful spoilers on those things. The, the trunk and the, the tail lights. The rear of those cars are just so good looking. Man. So good looking. 2002 had a great uh, model class. And why are we running the apron? It's probably a good question. Alright, so pretty much right now we need to run our groove and try to see if we can get the lead away from Jeff Gordon. Now, if I remember correctly, I believe Jeff Gordon actually won the Summer Atlanta race. So he is up here again uh, looking for his second Atlanta win of the year, the DuPont Monte Carlo. I have no clue how that's going to turn out, but he is in the championship battle and he's going to need a lot of points. I mean, he's going to have to go out here and win this race and hope for a little bit of luck to go his way. The 32 lap event. This racetrack reminds me so much of the, um, the Texas night races. I love that so much because I really do love Texas at night. Such a great racetrack. The old ver version, not the new version. If we can just get around Jimmy Johnson, that'd be great. So our car is not dominant or anything like that, but it's just a solid race car. And to be honest, it reminds me so much of the car we had at Charlotte. When we were just we were good enough to hang with the leaders, but we just could not pull away like we did at Chicago land. But Jimmy Johnson needs to get out of my way. Because again, our car setup is built for short run speed. Once our tires fall off, we're gonna really be in a bind. I'm going to have to make this move here and just hope the car sticks. Sorry, Johnson. i got to get around you, bud. Right. So I believe we just completed the pass. There we go. Now it's lap seven. Can we run down Jeff Gordon and try to go get a few laps led? I think he's won about two races this season. And we just tagged the wall there. That's nice. And we just tagged Jimmy Johnson, too. That's great. They didn't expect him down there, so there goes his good run. We're going to try to run down Jeff Gordon. Dang it. Car is still way too tight. And these old tires are giving up. One thing I've noticed though is turns three and four actually had some bumps. Now I don't know if that's uh, just characteristics they added from the real race track or is that actually a, a glitch uh, for this track that maybe they did not fix. As this is a, a track you have to unlock so it's not one they're going to put all their effort into. But it's really weird when you enter, like right there, that bump. I'm guessing it's actually a part of the racetrack, which I think is super cool. Go to add that bump into the racetrack. I think that's super cool. Adds characteristics, which you know makes makes tracks uh, memorable. You know, people like to go to them and be able to experience the bumps and corners and stuff, which is great. Here we got our lap nine at 32. We are, it's literally the Coke 600, or not, sorry, uh, the Day Charlotte race all over again, where we're second place, and the guy who's leading is pulling away, which then it was Dale Jr., now it's Jeff Gordon. Either way, we're on old tires, and we're going to need some new ones soon. A little bit like our speedway, it's my, easily my, probably my favorite one half mile. That in Vegas, the modern day Vegas, and this one is just, I love these tracks so much. But we're not going to gain anything on the DuPont Monte Carlo, at least not right now. Right now we're just kind of hanging in there until we get some new tires. Halfway on fuel, the tires are old and worn. We need some new tires. These tires are not going to hold on the Sitco Taurus. But yeah, looking forward to the season. You know, we got a few more races behind the 99, and I still want to get one more victory. I still want one more victory. So if we can get that one, that'd be great. We do have some good opportunities. We're going back to Texas. We're going to Homestead, a track we have not raced all year. We're going back to um, North Carolina, which should be a good setup. 
And then of course you have the Texas Road Course, which you haven't raced either. So we have some opportunities. We're gonna have to, you know, make get a surprise one though if we want to win. But we won what 11 races this year. So I mean, get one number 12, make it an official dozen. I mean, that'd be awesome. That's what that's what I want to shoot for. So again, Jeff Gordon is pulling away, but we have pulled away from third place. So it's literally the same identical scenario that happened a few weeks ago in Charlotte, and we're back in the wall again. It was a super tight race car, and we just cannot hold the bottom at all. Which is okay, just some light damage. Ain't nothing too bad. Pit stop should be heating up any moment now. Should be able to get our first takers on pit road. Uh, we'll probably lap, or we'll, we'll probably pit on lap maybe 15 or 16. Oh boy, it's sleepy. At 14 out of 32 here. It's the Georgia 500 underneath the lights at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Uh, first takers on pit road. Yeah, I know. I know my tires are terrible right now. I think we're going to pit now. This is going to be a lot more than a pit because we're good on fuel. I'm trying, but these tires are just no good. These tires are just absolutely awful. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pit this time around. We should be good on fuel. I think we at least have a lap worth of gas to throw away. Tires, repair damage, full tank of gas. Let's see if we can get any um, any more speed out of this thing. Hopefully a clean pit stop will be in our favor. Sweet, 15.6, it was expected to be a 16 second pit stop, 15.6. That's a great pit stop in terms of what we kind of do. We had to repair a little damage on the car, but now we should be good. So we should be good to go now. Um, I don't know what position we'll finish, but again, top 15, that's what I'm looking for. If we had to come out here and get a top 15, I think it would absolutely be amazing. guys when we're on fresh tires. Like on the short run, we're super good. If we had like a late race caution with brand new tires, absolutely this car is amazing, but we just don't have that um, that speed in the long run and once our tires fall off we're pretty well we're pretty well cooked at that point. But again we pitted when we were second a lap before the leader. Uh, Sterling Marlin is the leader now but uh, Jeff Gordon uh, should be up in the front after this is all said and done. Yeah, because he's not in the top uh, five, so he must be on pit road or waiting for everything to cycle out. Hopefully we don't have any yellow flags and we can get back up there into the top five and maybe have a shot at this win. I mean, we want to win one more race with uh, the 99 Sitco team. See if we can pull one out of the hat, so to speak. The leader is on pit road, so we should be able to leave lapping out. Just trying to see. Okay, so we're going to be at least ahead of uh, Jimmy Johnson, which is great. Which is great. I think Martin and Matt Kenseth have to pit. I think they have to pit. I'm not sure. I'm sure Bobby does. Should, he should have to pit. Well, nope. interesting. So I don't know who's going to be the leader. Oh my god. Is that the leader? Jeff Gordon is just shot out of a cannon. He is all the way down the back straightaway, and I'm in the middle of turns three and four. Uh, Mark Martin and Kenseth are for position, and we're so loose, and wow. 
cautions out. Big wreck on the back straightaway. And that is my doing, unfortunately, because we did uh, check this pause screen like an idiot. Oh my goodness. And we can't pit because we'll lose all our track position. So we're going to be 11th on the restart. Mm, that is not good at all. So let's see what happened. We just. What it looks like to me, we were racing hard with the six car. And I was trying to not hit him, and I kind of got in the wall. And when I did that, my car got loose, and then there was nowhere to go for the guy behind me, which was Matt Kenseth. So that's unfortunate, but, you know, get to guy to it. To take what you got to take, you know. Hey, you know, I'm. Less than 10 laps to go here in Georgia. Uh, we're not going to have any shot out of the top 5, and I don't think we're going to have any shot out of the top 10 much, as we have a lot of damage on the car, but we cannot pit because then we'll get dead last, so we're pretty much holding it on for dear life here. This has been a very long season. I won there. It's been a very long season and a lot of disappointments. To you know it, we've won this many races and we're not even in the top 5 in points. It's, it's, it's really disappointing. We should go out here and try to run our race as best as we can. And as you can tell, our car is nowhere near where the speed it had before. I mean, we used to be exiting this corner at 170, now we're at 165, caution is out. Oh my gosh, and there's Warren, front row. That's for Indianapolis. Looks like Terry Labonte has a hood coming off. Well, we're not going to pit. You know, I'm coming to find Mike Skinner. Where is Skinner? Gotta sacrifice spots for him, but should he get around me, I will dump him. Oh, Bill. Uh, and I said top 15 or bust, so I mean, we're still waiting that uh, thing. Oh my god, we just got super loose with the bump there. Bill's there, Bill's there, Bill's there, Bill's not there. No! That thing's just. Yeah, we just don't have speed at all. At all, we don't have any speed. The car is just, it's so beat up. Aerodynamically, it's just no good anymore. Uh oh, we got one of the front runners with an engine failure. No, I was trying to square up a Mac, uh, Mike Skinner there, and that did not work. We we're going to be 23rd. This race has just been awful. I, I, I'm looking forward to the end of the season. I really am. A lot of disappointments. A lot of disappointments, indeed. Jeff Gordon's going to sweep Atlanta this season. Sterling, that's what I'm saying. You, you can't do nothing. Because every time you finish good, Sterling Marlin finishes good. I mean, literally, it's ridiculous how consistent this guy is. Uh, so, I mean, look at the points he's going to get. This dude's going to get, like, 170, 170, he's going to get, like, 180 in total. I mean, this is ridiculous. Freaking... Stolen Marty gets 135, Jeff Gordon gets 185, I mean he gained 10 points on Big Whip, you know, the, the points battle is, is so crazy, but um, Dale Jarrett, oh my god, where did he finish, Dale Jarrett's gonna finish 40th, so Jarrett, being the points leader, is going to lose, how much points did he have to see? 43 points, so he's going to lose the lead, I think. I think Marlin will have the lead again. 
That's crazy. Well, that has been uh, one we, I would like to forget. That was a bad race there. That, little, that was a bad race. If you liked the video, please leave a like below. If you want to see more content from Bad Guys Buffet, please subscribe or a small one on YouTube channel. We want to help you get. Also, go check me out on Instagram at Diecast Buffet for a lot of cool Diecast stuff. You know, hope you, hope you have a great one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Diecast Buffet, signing off.